welcome to another episode of Adventures in Welding. I'm Paul. Thanks for joining me. Today we're back to some TIG welding. And specifically what we're going to be talking about is doing some TIG welding on some thicker material. This is some 3 8 inch uh, mild steel plate. Got it beveled to a nice 45 there with a the feather edge. We're going to put these together with the gap. We're going to weld them up. Going to be using the uh, number 17 torch with a 332nd 2% thoriated electron. It's got a little stubby gas lens on there. We're going to be using some ER70 F6 electrodes. And we'll be using the Eastwood TIG 200. So let's get it set up and get ready to weld. Alright, let's set up the Eastwood TIG 200 for this uh, thick steel welding. First of all, we're not going to worry about the amp knob here because we'll be controlling it with the foot pedal. And also the clearance effect doesn't matter. That's for AC mode only. We'll be welding in DC. I've got my pre-flow set for about uh, four tenths of a second and I like a nice long post flow. Mine's set at seven seconds. Now I said we'd be controlling the amperage with the foot pedal so we have the foot pedal set for a maximum of about 125 amps. All that's left now is to switch it on and get set up and weld. We're going to get started by setting up our tack here. I'm going to use a 332nd aluminum rod to set my gap. And if you're wondering why I'm using aluminum, I'm using the aluminum because it won't stick to the steel and it's a little bit compressible and easier to get out of there. Alright, I've got everything placed where I like it. So our next step is going to be to tack it up. With the gap here, we're not going to be able to use the speed tacking method that I like. So we're just going to have to use some filler and tack it up. All right, here we go putting in the root pass. Oh, there's a little stick. All right, the, this is uh, just like putting in an open root pass with the stick method. Well, almost. You know, you're going to run a little bit of keyhole. The thing here is I'm using some thin filler metal. It is smaller than the root gap opening, so i gotta uh, got to manipulate a little bit there. That was just the plate arcing out to the table. No big deal. So I'll be manipulating the torch with the one hand and the filler a little bit with the other hand covering that gap. But I assure you we will get a uh, good full root coverage. Speed it up here for you a little bit so you don't have to watch this whole thing. This is a, uh, a slow process. And I'm also going to put in the, uh, the hot pass here as well. Both are manipulating. I'm going to switch to eighth inch after this. Alright, this has cooled overnight since our root and our hot pass have been done. And as you can see from the back, we have full penetration. A little, uh, little booger there, a whisker we call that in MIG welding. But we've got good root reinforcement. So we've laid our first two passes in there. And I'm guessing it's going to take three more passes two more fills in the cover so let's get on with it all right here we go with the first of our regular uh, hot fill passes and what's nice after you know you've covered the root up is you don't have to worry about the key holding and where you're placing the heat uh, quite as exactly and I'm doing a simple weave technique here 
Now I'm still on a, about 120 amps here, which I think is a little bit low. So now I've moved it up to a higher amp range, about 140. And it's just going to make things go a little bit easier for us. We're sped up here quite a bit so that you don't have to watch every, every grueling second of this. Simple Z-Weave. Yes, you could also do this with the filler method. I mean the stringer method. I'll try that next time. But as you can see, there's really nothing to it. We're just laying it in there, about 140 amps. All right, here we are with one of our fill passes complete. Everything is looking good. Uh, you can see the scalloping along the bevel edges. That's all got to be covered and filled in. We don't want any undercut. This isn't stick welding here. This is TIG. Now, in the center of our gap here, or in the center of the weldment, we've got a bit of a depression. This is a 16th inch electrode I'm putting in there. And we'll put an 8th inch on just to show you how where the top flat is. So you can see we're a little more than a 16th of an inch, so it's going to take another pass. 140 amps here with the 8th inch uh, rod. And I'm taking the time to make sure I fill up that center so we don't have any divot when we go to do our, our, fill pa our cover pass. It's uh, pretty hot melting uh, each part of the weave and filling her in with the uh, with the rod. It's a very deliberate process. Moving one step at a time back and forth and a little bit forward making sure to feed in plenty of rod once everything is melted. <clears throat> Remember when TIG welding the torch melts the base metal the base metal melts the puddle. All right, here I picked it up a little bit so you don't have to continue to watch that and I don't have to continue to think of clever things to say. We're just filling her up here, moving along. Now we're on to the cover pass, which I also sped up. And it's more of the old back and forth. Want to make sure that we're covering the bevel ends and that we are at minimum flush. All right, folks, that's it for this episode of Adventures in Welding. Welding thick steel using the GTAW or TIG process. You can see we got a nice finish there, nice and flat. Full penetration to the back with reinforcements. Nothing different than doing a thinner seal, it just takes more passes. Would I do this in the field if that's what the welding procedure called for? Were it my choice? Probably not. The timer of the essence, I would just use stick or MIG. They're quicker processes. But you got to do what the job calls for. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you again next time on Adventures in Welding.